Hey, I'm James, and today I'm going to discuss the coronary arteries. I'll first start by covering the typical descriptions of the arteries, then I'll discuss variations in patterns and distributions. Following this, I'll then talk about the clinical implications of coronary artery occlusion. The coronary arteries arise from the aortic sinuses at the beginning of the ascending aorta. There are two coronary arteries, a left and a right, which supply their respective size of the heart, although there is some crossover. The right coronary artery, which we can see here running along the surface of the heart, arises from the anterior aortic sinus, located here within the ascending aorta. It passes between the pulmonary trunk and the right auricle to descend along the atrioventricular groove. One of the initial branches, the sinoatrial branch, will pass between the ascending aorta and the right auricle to form an arterial ring around the superior vena cava. In 60% of individuals, the SA nodal branch will arise from the right coronary artery, though in some it may arise from the left circumflex artery, which we will visit later. The right coronary artery will continue to pass along the atrioventricular groove, where a number of large ventricular arteries arise, one of which is the right conus branch, which supplies the anterior ventricular surface and the anterior pulmonary conus here. This artery often anastomoses with the corresponding left conus artery, which arises from the left coronary artery. As we continue towards the inferior margin of the heart, another large ventricular branch will arise, and this is the right marginal artery, which we can see here. This branch will supply the inferior border of the heart and may continue towards the apex of the heart here. And as we continue towards the posterior surface of the heart, another large branch will arise, and this is the posterior interventricular artery, which will run within the interventricular groove. This branch will continue towards the apex of the heart, where it may anastomose with the anterior interventricular artery. As the right coronary artery continues this way, it begins to peter out, but it may anastomose with the left circumflex artery, which we will visit in a second. The left coronary artery is the larger of the coronary arteries, although it is significantly shorter. It arises from the left posterior aortic sinus within the ascending aorta and will pass between the pulmonary trunk and the left auricle, where it will emerge between the infundibulum here and the left auricle to divide into its terminal branches, the anterior interventricular artery and the left circumflex artery. The anterior interventricular artery will continue to run along the interventricular groove where a number of large ventricular arteries will arise, one of which is the left conus artery, which will anastomose with the right conus artery in some, and in approximately 50% of individuals, a large diagonal branch will arise to supply the anterior surface of the heart. As the anterior interventricular artery continues towards the apex, it may anastomose with the posterior interventricular artery. The circumflex branch will continue towards the diaphragmatic surface of the heart. As it approaches the left margin of the heart, the left marginal artery will arise to continue towards the apex. As the circumflex branch continues onto the diaphragmatic surface, it may anastomose with the right coronary artery. Coronary artery dominance is determined by which artery gives rise to the posterior interventricular artery, seen here. This branch is most commonly associated with the right coronary artery, but arises from the left circumflex branch in 10% of cases. Equal dominance occurs when branches from the left and right coronary arteries run within the posterior interventricular groove. Anastomoses can potentially develop between a number of different branches of the coronary arteries. However, these anastomoses are usually not sufficient enough to provide an adequate blood supply. A sudden occlusion of one of the larger branches of either coronary artery usually leads to myocardial death. So just to summarise, in this video I've covered the typical descriptions of the coronary arteries and their associated branches, as well as variations in patterns and distributions. At the end, I covered the consequences of coronary artery occlusion.
We'd love to hear your feedback on what you thought of this video and what topics you'd like us to cover in the future. You can do this by leaving a comment or dropping us an email.